One of those big cracks that I heard hitting something to hit this calf. These are stalker cattle. I had an order buyer pick them up for me from a sale barn. There are eight of them and they weigh an average of 485 pounds. We need to background them for 60 days to officially give them a clean bill of health. We suspect they haven't had much attention in the health side of things. So we will vaccinate and castrate them. We'll give them a wormer, a growth implant, ear and fly tags. We'll give them antibiotics for any sickness they may have already come to the ranch with. Now, as I mentioned, we'll be castrating some of them, so some are steers and some are bulls, but if you're squeamish, I wouldn't suggest watching the upcoming clips. After that 60-day period, they should be officially healthy and we can really let them start to grow. But first, let's get them processed. They missed when they went to cut him. Oh, man, they left one off. Yeah. You can feel it right in here. So the processing is complete, however, you may have noticed me taking a small notch out of each calf's ear. We put each notch in a vial with a liquid solution for something called a PI test. PI stands for persistently infected, and what these calves are persistently infected with is bovine viral diarrhea. They contract it in gestation, and once they're born, they don't really show symptoms, so you can't tell unless you test for it. Take two different notches and put them together in one of these snap tests. If we get one dot, they're both negative. If we get two dots, this could mean one or even both calves are positive. The reason we use one test for two different notches is just to save a little bit of money and time. So if it reads positive, we'll test them separately. While we can treat the calves the BVD has been transmitted to, we can't cure the PI calf itself. I'll leave an article in the description if you want to learn more about persistently infected BVD, but that's not the main topic of this video. Luckily though, all of our calves tested negative. It's not very surprising because it's only about a one in a thousand chance. So since they're negative, let's get them back to the farm. Buddy. 
In the first couple of days, we'll want to get the calves started on eating feed. We'll also mix in some hay before we turn them out to pasture, and we'll give them some fresh water and access to mineral. We'll have to walk them frequently for the first several weeks. This gets their lungs working so that if one of them is starting to develop a respiratory virus, they'll start to cough some, and thus we'll be able to catch their sickness much sooner than if we were just looking at them standing still. Also, these are two formerly sick calves from my last herd. You can find out more about them in another one of our videos, but these guys will fit in better with the new group than with the old group. Hence why I kept them. Day nine? Is it nine? I think it's nine, isn't it? It's definitely nine. Maybe. Possibly. Nine. Nine days. And then it happened. Tragedy reared her ugly head, but not in the form of a virus this time, in the form of electricity. Nine days after the calves had been at our farm, calf 960 was struck and killed by lightning. It was a horrible storm and we heard some very large booms in it. When I went to feed that night after the storm, one calf didn't come up to the bunk. I went to the field immediately sensing something was off and then, I was dumbfounded, as you can imagine. I'd lost a calf to a lightning strike. Frustrated but somewhat amused by the absurdity of a situation like this, I went and buried the calf and just moved on. As anticlimactic as that is, that's just how ranching goes. The work doesn't stop. There was still feed to be picked up the next day and a 60-day backgrounding period to complete. about three weeks into the backgrounding period, we'll give the calves a second round of vaccines. But myself, my mentor Ben, and his dad, who have both been helping me throughout the video, were all very busy around that time and it kept getting put off. No health problems resulted from it though, so we opted to not to do a revac on this herd and thus saved some time and money. So now that the calves are officially backgrounded, we'll hold them and let them grow until we're ready to sell them. It's a pretty simple process pretty long process.
so the calves are finally leaving. It's been a while. I think you guys have gotten me a million views. That's what I hope. This probably won't get a million views, but uh, Ben is coming by and we are gonna haul these guys to the order buyer's barn with his rig. So he will be here very soon. You guys will be leaving. Now I was unable to film the calves after they left our farm, but we actually sold them back to my order buyer and they had an average weight of 840 pounds and an average price of $1.50 per pound. Now keep in mind we bought these calves back in May of 2022 and sold them in December of 2022, so cattle prices are going to be a little bit different in present time. I'll go ahead and put our cost and our net profit on screen. Um, our feed costs were definitely high on this group. Um, but considering we lost a calf on this group, we, we didn't do too bad profit-wise. Um, it's not my highest profit per head, but it wasn't bad either. If you would like to see me do a deeper dive on my finances, check out some of my other stalker cattle videos. I will leave a card link in the top right corner to one of those for you if you would like to see that. This particular herd went very smoothly, especially compared to my previous herds. And I also have another video filmed on the next herd we bought already. So I will have that out in the future. So that is it for this video, guys. But uh, right now, I would just like to take the time to apologize. I know I've been gone for a long time. It's been like six months. Um, I actually have a good excuse this time for once. I've actually gathered what's probably close to a hundred hours of footage over the last several months for what will be not only my biggest project on YouTube thus far, but the biggest project I've undertaken in my entire life. Period. Guys, stick around if you enjoy my hay videos.